Apple just leaked the iPhone 15, but not in the way that we were expecting. WWDC was just jam-packed this year. We got new Macs, we got big software updates, the headset is finally real, but we also got some big clues, hints, and uh, some little sneak peeks at what is coming next with the iPhone, and what Apple showed is really exciting, and it's coming in just a couple of months. So I have scoured the entire Apple website. I went back and rewatched the entire WWDC keynote and I found some clues, some things you need to know about some hints Apple dropped about the iPhone 15 and also an iPhone Ultra. Looks like that is real as well. Let me tell you everything you need to know and why Apple Vision Pro might have just saved the iPhone. So now that WWDC has officially wrapped and the headset has been revealed, all eyes, all ears, and everyone's wallets are all trained on this headset. There are so many controversial takes, whether it's worth it or not, and I have plenty to say about that, and I'll get to that a little bit later in this video, but where attention is not right now is on the iPhone 15 line, which is exactly how Apple likes it because they don't want any leaks, they don't want any news getting out because they're making some last minute tweaks and changes to the iPhone 15 because full on production is set to start in just a couple of weeks before the big release later on this fall. And if I could sum up all of the iPhone 15 leaks we've gotten so far into one emoji, it'd probably be this guy here. It's not the biggest year we've ever seen, but also not the smallest. It's just kind of sort of meh. Some nice stuff is coming. Yeah, some cool camera upgrades and stuff like that, but certainly not the biggest iPhone upgrade many of us were expecting. But Apple did drop a couple of hints and clues throughout that presentation at what could be coming soon with the iPhone 15 and a little beyond. And if we take a look at all of those things, sort of confirm some rumors and leaks and does make the iPhone 15 a bit more exciting. So let me start with an interesting observation, and that is that through that entire two plus hour keynote and all over the iOS 17 page on Apple's website, every single iPhone model they show has the dynamic island. You won't find a regular 14 or 14 plus there with the regular old notch, which is probably on purpose. Not only is the dynamic island newer, it's fresher, it's the new thing Apple is trying to really show off and it looks a lot better sort of in photos and videos, but also it might so subtly or not so subtly confirm the big rumor and that is that the notch is officially going away that every single 15 model, including the non-pro models, the 15 and 15 plus will have have the dynamic island this year, which means the notch is officially dead. And maybe it's just one big coincidence that Apple did this, but I don't think so. I think obviously the dynamic island is something Apple's pushing as their latest thing. It's sort of the evolution of the notch, and I don't think anyone's really gonna miss the notch. It's not just gonna be a sad departure uh, when that thing finally goes later this September. Uh, but instead, you know, Apple's gonna embrace the dynamic island, and we're gonna see it on every single model. We've also heard some rumors that iOS 17 is going to dramatically enhance the usability of the dynamic island. It's gonna fix some of the bugs that we we saw with the current iPhones we've got in iOS 16. I'm not sure if this is true or not since I haven't uh, installed the beta on my phone because I'm not going to risk that on my main phone, um, but we probably will see that in uh, later betas uh, later on the summer and especially the fall. As Apple goes all in on the Dynamic Island, I'd expect some improvements and enhancements to come to it both in hardware and software with the new phones later this year and also iOS 17 making some improvements too. Another hint that Apple might be dropping with the iPhone 15 Pro series specifically is coming straight from the Apple Vision Pro headset. It still sort of feels weird to say this. I can't believe the headset's actually here, but it is real. And uh, during the demo portion of this headset, there was this sort of odd um, example of taking spatial or 3D photos and videos here uh, on the headset. As odd as this looks, it does actually open up the door of opportunity for two potentially cool and interesting features for the next evolution of the iPhone. For example, there is a specific button on the Apple Vision Pro headset just for taking the spatial photos and videos without you having to fumble around and find different things, a dedicated button for the camera, which might align with the current rumors of the iPhone 15 Pro series, and that is that Apple is going to ditch the volume mute switch that's been on the iPhone since the very beginning with that OG model in favor of a mute button, which may be programmable and do different things. 
And maybe a dedicated photo and video button on the headset shows what Apple could do with the iPhone as well, giving us that dedicated button for launching the camera. So maybe you could program it to sort of long press and then mute your phone and unmute sort of like you do with that switch. But maybe a single tap would actually let you go right into the camera. So you could immediately start taking photos and videos. Apple does sort of have that uh, sort of unlock method on the home screen where you can go right to the camera. There's also like a back tap that you can configure as well. But I think many people would love one simple, one dedicated button that you could press and instantly start taking photos and videos. And maybe the headset shows that is coming to the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max. There's also the idea that maybe the 15 Pro series would be able to take the spatial photos and videos. Now, I'm not an expert. I don't understand all the cameras and sensors and all the different things this headset has. But I do know that for the last couple of years, both the iPad Pro series and the iPhone have had the LiDAR sensor built in that in my opinion has been super underutilized. It seemed like Apple had put that on these phones for a reason. For years and years, they were laying the groundwork for something bigger. And while LiDAR is used by a couple apps, and I know Apple uses it in some instances, I feel like the potential is there for something much bigger. And maybe that could be this, the ability to take the spatially aware, these more in-depth photos and videos from your iPhone 15 Pro phone. Again, not sure if it's technically possible, though maybe Apple could make some software wizardry happen. I mean, the LiDAR scanner is capable of some cool things. And maybe if they're sort of pushing this as a feature of the headset and the ability to sit down and really see your photos and videos in a whole new way, I feel like most people aren't walking around taking photos and videos on the headset, but they would walk around with this and take photos and videos on their phones. And that would be really cool. It would make a lot of sense that you could take those special photos and videos on your iPhone and then play them back when you're seated on your Vision Pro headset. Not sure if that's going to happen. Maybe that's a change to LiDAR down the road with the 16 or 17, but Apple certainly has some time now that the headset has been sort of revealed that we could see the LiDAR change to allow for that feature on the 15 Pro later this year. There are also a couple of interesting points throughout the keynote that Apple really focused on using your iPhone as a camera. Obviously, we got that whole feature last year that lets you use your iPhone as a webcam. That's sort of cool. Now we have the ability to use your iPhone as a webcam for an Apple TV FaceTime app and uh, conferencing apps, which is cool as well. But it does make me think a couple of things. One is that we have the ability to do center stage on the iPad and on the Mac and on the back cameras of your iPhone. But why doesn't Apple bring center stage to the front facing selfie camera? Wouldn't that make a lot of sense to put it on the front of your phone instead of having to turn your phone around and use a second screen? We've seen center stage technology for a while now, and I know it does some weird cropping and stuff like that. But seeing as many people take FaceTime calls and conference calls and all that from your iPhone, sort of using your screen to actually, you know, be the screen and show stuff, it would make a lot of sense to put center stage on the iPhone. I think that's something Apple could definitely do. And maybe we see that with the 15 Pro series later on this year, because it just seems to make a lot of sense. The other thing that Apple sort of quickly glossed over was the ability to use gestures to do different reactions when you're on a video call. I got to get some more clarity on this. They should have a really quick demo of this uh, during the presentation, but it sort of made me think a couple of things is one, maybe that could be a thing where you could sort of uh, use gestures like you would on the headset to control different aspects of the iPhone. But then I quickly think that Google did try that with the Pixel. Wasn't it Project Soli, Project Soli, something like that? And it didn't really work out all that well. Obviously, Apple is going heavily in on the whole using your hands as controllers thing for Apple Vision Pro. And uh, as they're sort of building this into their camera technology, I wonder if we could see that come to the iPhone in any significant way. Maybe with the 15 Pro series, maybe with the 16 Pro, that you could use that true depth system to maybe do gestures to scroll or interact with apps. I'm not exactly sure if it makes sense on the iPhone. I'm not sure if that's something you'd want to do, but they did sort of demo it quickly here in this presentation. And I'm curious to see if that feature set does expand and if Apple could take some of the cool stuff with Vision Pro and bring it down to the iPhone Pro series. Now, with all that said, I think one of the other more exciting things to talk about here is how Apple Vision Pro could save the iPhone. I've talked before about how the headset could replace the iPhone, and a lot of you guys hate me for that. That's fine. You can comment below if you hate me. Uh, but I do think that there's a lot of exciting potential, at least in the short term, uh, for what Vision Pro means for the future of the iPhone. Obviously, Apple's doing a lot of groundbreaking stuff with this headset. It is obviously pretty expensive at $3,500, but what it also seems to signal is 
is that one, Apple is not done innovating. They are truly in this arena to be a trailblazer and to do amazing things and to really continue to innovate and show that they know what they're doing but also it opens up the opportunity for some ultra iPhones that maybe are more expensive, but give us a truly remarkable experience on a product that we all love so much. And what's so interesting about this is that we've heard these rumors over the last few months that Apple is working or potentially working on an ultra iPhone for as early as 2024, that this could be a higher end model with a bigger screen, a bigger battery, more exclusive features that was more expensive expensive, but was also better and different than the iPhone models we have right now. And Apple Vision Pro seems to show that that might actually become reality, so to speak. So I'm curious, what are your thoughts on WWDC, on the Apple headset, on the iPhone 15? Did you catch any Easter eggs or clues uh, that sort of alluded to what Apple could be working on next with the 15 from that presentation? Let me know down below your thoughts on the iPhone 15 and uh, if you think Vision Pro means an iPhone Ultra could be coming. Let me know down below. Also, if you made it this far in honor of the Vision Pro headset, let's drop the sunglass emoji down below in the comments if you made it this far in the video. That'll let me know you're a true Apple Circle fan. And for that, I say thank you very much. I appreciate you. Drop that uh, cool sunglasses emoji guy down below in the comments. Let me know your thoughts as always. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching. I'm Robert Rosenfeld, and I'll see you all in the next one.